Hello everybody. In this module, we will be discussing a specialized MAC algorithm which is adapted to wireless environments. MAC is a uh, protocol of data link layer and it is used to regulate the access of medium when multiple users are using the medium. Now it is a requirement for every medium but in wireless scenario, the wireless medium where the medium is air or atmosphere and the multiple users try to access the medium, collisions may occur. Therefore, specialized algorithms are required for wireless scenario. Now, the existing uh, uh, protocols for the wired network like CSMACD uh, used for MAC cannot be directly used in wireless scenario for the reasons which occur or the problems which occur typically in the wireless scenario and these problems are known as hidden and exposed terminal problem and near and far terminal problem. So to uh, therefore for a wireless environment specialized MAC algorithms have been devised. Now MAC algorithm should have a goal of uh, the collisions should be less, the throughput should be more, channel utilization should be maximum, there should be fairness among the users and there should be no jitter or delay. So in this module, we will discuss that what is the motivation behind the de uh, device of specialized MAC algorithms for wireless networks and we will discuss in detail a specialized algorithm which is known as MAC A. We will see the architecture of this algorithm, the functioning of this algorithm and through the time state diagram we will see that what happens at sender and receiver and how these algorithms solve the problem of hidden and exposed terminal and near and far terminal problems. So the objectives of this module are why medium access control is necessary in wireless environment we will discuss then we will see that why there is a need of separate MAC protocols for wireless environment what is hidden and exposed terminal problem what is near and far terminal problem and we will introduce an algorithm which is known as MACA, MAC A algorithm and we will see how it solves the hidden and exposed and near and far terminal problem. And we will also discuss the MAC protocols used by IEEE 82.11. What is medium access control? Medium access control is a protocol of data link layer. It is used to regulate the control of access of the medium among different users without or very less collisions. The transmission medium in wireless communication is air or atmosphere which is shared by multiple users or subscribers. In such a situation, simultaneous access by multiple users may lead to collision. Hence, proper regulations for medium access control are necessary. Now, what is the motivation for specialized MAC in MAC environment. So for this let us uh, consider an algorithm which is used in wired network that is CSMACD. What is the abbreviation for this name? Carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. Now what is meant by carrier sense that is the algorithm senses the medium and then it transmits and then it detects the collisions. Let us uh, to understand this algorithm, let us first uh, consider an analogy uh, which we uh, face in day to day life. That is, the analogy is a round table conference and the different people participate and communicate. They sense through their eyes and ears to find if anybody is talking. So, if anyone senses someone talking, he remains quiet. That is, the sensing is listen before you talk. Now this is how the medium is sensed. So in real time also when we want to transmit we first sense the medium to be busy or free. So if free then the person talks otherwise it waits. So if no one is found to be talking then the person speak. In roundtable conference there is also a special mechanism applied uh, in which uh, there is a button which is provided in the front of the speaker. So when any person wants to speak, it presses the button. So uh, when the button is pressed, 
the light on that button uh, gets highlighted and so the other people know that this person is speaking so they will wait for their turn to come okay so uh, the users continuously listen to the medium to sense the, it is free and it, if it is found to be free then the person talks now at time of talking it also continues listen to the medium for any other collisions so and if it observes that the speech has coincided with some other person it stops and then um, repeats its previous speech because when it understand that the part of the speech has garbled up with some other speech and therefore it again talks back so what is what has happened in this analogy the medium is sensed to be free or busy it might be the sensing can be might be through ears through eyes or as i said in a round table conference by uh, sensing the light of the button if free transmit else wait and continuously listen to the medium for any collisions and if the collisions are observed stop and then repeat the previous speech this is how the csma cd works so it senses the medium if free it transmits and then it continues to the listen to the medium and if any collision has been observed stops the transmission sends a jamming signal and retransmits the packet so this is how carrier sends multiple access with collision detection work now this scheme works very well in the wired communication why because all the devices are connected through the wire and the strength of the signal is uniform throughout the wire hence all the device can listen to the medium and detect the collision if it exist but this method of sensing and the collision detection might not work in the wireless or the mobile networks because in wireless networks the signal propagates in omnidirectional way in on the direction and the strength of the signal decreases inversely as the square of distance from the transmitter also the objects in the way from sender to receiver offers various effects like reflection scattering diffraction leading to multipath propagation and many other undesirable effects which degrades the signal so the strength of the signal is not uniform throughout in wireless networks also the receiving power is very much less than the transmitting power therefore the wireless transceivers can't send and receive on the same time at the same channel so they cannot detect the collisions and most importantly hidden and exposed terminal problem near and far terminal problems fails the use of csma ct in wireless networks now let us see that what are these problems and how csma ct fails in the presence of these problems now what is a hidden and exposed terminal problem to understand this problem let us consider what are hidden terminals as the strength of the signal transmitting from a wireless device decreases with distance the transmission is limited to a certain area known as transmission range after which the signal diminishes we have discussed many time that depending on the power of the antenna the strength of the signal will reach only up to a certain distance and after that it won't be recognized a device can listen only to those devices which are in its range obviously and hence um others are said to be hidden from it that means a device will sense only that device which is in its transmission range and all the other devices uh, whose transmission do not reach that device are said to be hidden from it you can refer to the diagram there are three devices a b and c a is in the transmission range of b that is the transmission of a can reach b and vice versa b is in transmission range of c that is the transmission of b can reach to c and vice versa 
But the problem here is that you can see from the diagram also that A and C are not in transmission range of each other. They are said to be hidden from each other. So, what is uh, the what is the scene of hidden terminals? A uh, there are three uh, terminals A, B, and C. A is in transmission range of B. B is in transmission range of C. But A and C are not in transmission range of each other. They are said to be hidden from each other. So, what will happen in such a scenario when both A and C are wishing to transmit a packet to B. You can refer to the diagram. A wish to transmit. So, it is applying a CSMACD. For that, it senses the medium, finds it to be ideal. So, sensing the medium to be ideal, it transmits. Now, here C cannot hear the transmission of A. C does not know that A has transmitted. Why? Because the transmission of A does not reach C. A and C are hidden from each other. No problem. But the problem occurs when C also wish to transmit and it also senses the medium to be idle. Why? Because it is not sensing the transmission of A. So, it will in no way understand that A is transmitted and when it will sense the medium, it will find to be free. So, here carrier sense fails. Now, sensing the medium to be idle, it will also transmit and a collision will occur at B because both A and C sensing the medium to be free are transmitting causing the collision to occur at B. And the worst thing, these collisions are also not heard by A and C. Collision detection fails. Both continue transmitting because A and C are hidden from each other. Now, these collided packets have to be resent. Hence, the hidden terminal problem drastically reduces the throughput. Now, the other scene is uh, also same, but it is posing some other problem. Uh, now, what is it? A and B are in transmission range of each other. B and C are in transmission range of each other. C and D are in transmission range of each other. But the thing is that B is transmitting to A and C wish to transmit to D. Now, these are both are the different things. It is possible they can transmit without collision. But what will happen here? B is transmitting to A. Now, this transmission will be heard by C. Why? Because C is in transmission range of B. Now, when C wish to transmit to D, it will sense the medium to be busy. Now, the thing is that the medium is not busy. B is transmitting to A, which is sensed by C as ideal. And when it wants to transmit to D, it is unnecessarily finding the medium to be busy and it is waiting for it to be free. It is refrained from transmitting. So, this is the situation where unnecessarily C is waiting and the delay is caused. This problem is known as exposed terminal problem. Uh, so, due to these uh, two problems, the we have seen that CSMA-CD has failed. Another problem which occurs in wireless communications is near far terminal problem. The problem is more acute when CDMA is used. Here, you can uh, refer to the diagram. A, B and C are three terminals in such a way that A is farther from A but nearer to C. That means the distance between A and C is more than the distance between B and C. Now, if A and B both transmit with same power, what will happen that B is close to C? So, there will be no effect on the quality of that signal. But since A is far from B, now the, when the signal from A after traveling the distance reaching C, the quality of the signal will be uh, degraded. And in the worst condition, the signal of B will overpower the signal of A that will it will drown the signal of A. This is known as near far terminal problem and is more 
problematic in CDMA. So these are the two problems which exist with wireless communications. So to deal with hidden and exposed terminal problem, a special algorithm was proposed by Kahn in 1990 to overcome these limitations. So in this algorithm, a special control packets are used known as RTS and CTS. Before understanding the framework and functioning of this algorithm, again I would like to take an analogy in a real time uh, situation and that analogy can be the solution to the hidden and exposed terminal problem and that is the what Meke algorithm uses. Now what is the problem here is that uh, I will take an analogy when uh, three people are sitting and of which two people want to talk to the third person. Now these two persons are out of range of each other. They cannot hear each other. So when one person is talking, other cannot sense. It finds the way to be free. He also starts talking and both the conversation coincides at the third person. So what should be done? So uh, the obvious solution is that before speaking, you ask to the third person that are you free? Can I talk to you? And if and only if he allows and then you start talking because the third person can hear both uh, one person's transmission as well as other person's transmission. So he can say very politely that no, I am busy. So you start your transmission only when I am free. This is a simple logic which is used in Mackey algorithm. So this management of asking and giving the consent to talk is handled by two control packets which are known as RTS and CTS. RTS abbreviates for request to send and CTS abbreviates for control to send. As the name itself indicates and as what we have seen in analogy that RTS should be sent when any transmission is required and CTS would be sent as a consent to initiate the transmission. So RTS is a control packet used by sender to seek permission from the receiver to transmit. CTS is a control packet used by the receiver to grant permission to the sender to transmit. Now what information do this RTS and CTS hold and how these can be used to solve the problem of hidden and exposed terminals. RTS and CTS both contains the name of sender, receiver and the duration of transmission. We will see that how these three information uh, helps to reduce the collisions or to reduce the unnecessary weight as in exposed terminal problem. Whenever any station wants to transmit, it sends an RTS to the receiver. If the receiver is free, it signals the transmission by sending a CTS. The sender sends the packet, receiver receives the packet, sends the acknowledgement. Okay. Now we will see that how with the help of this RTS CTS hidden tunnel problem is solved. Again refer to this diagram and the scene is A wants to transmit to B. It broadcast RTS to B. I am laying emphasis on broadcast. Broadcast means that when a device broadcasts something, all the devices which are in its range hears that particular transmission while this is a broadcast medium. So it A broadcasts RTS to B. This RTS is heard by B but not by C. A and C are hidden from each other. So RTS contains the name of sender that is the name of A as the sender, name of B as the receiver and the duration for which the packet would be sent. But here what happens is that now B sends a CTS, it is free, so it sends a CTS which is heard by C. Why? Because B and C are in range of each other. Now on hearing this CTS, C finds that A wish to communicate to B and it also finds the duration 
for which this transmission will takes place so it refrains itself for that duration to transmit so she is not allowed to transmit anything for the duration mentioned in the rts so again when she wants to transmit it will send an rts if b is free it will send the cts and then and only then c can transmit so hidden terminal problem is solved so before transmitting both the devices are taking the consent of the receiver and the receiver if free only it allows them to transmit hence no collisions are there now how exposed terminal problem is solved using rts and cts what was the problem b was transmitting to a c wishes to transmit to b but it unnecessarily waits because it hears the medium to be busy now here when b wants to transmit to a it sends rts to a this rts is heard by c a sends cts cts is not heard by c but it has heard the rts now c understands that it is out of range with a and looking at the rts it also understands that now b and a wish to communicate with each other and if i perform the transmission with d there will be no collision so it sends rts to d and on receiving cts from d it starts transmitting exposed terminal problem is solved so it see does not have to wait unnecessarily for the transmission uh, of b to stop so we see that how rts and cts used in mackey algorithm solves the hidden and exposed terminal problem but the limitations of mackey algorithm was that firstly it was just a three way handshake that is rts is sent cts is sent data is sent mackey did not provide specifications about the parameters what are rts cts packet sizes how to decide timers and so on also there can be collisions of rts that is both a and c wish to transmit to b at the same time both of them sends the rts and there will be a collision of rts at b now one can um, argue that the rts and the cts are control packets their sizes are very small so the rts and cts can be resent again but this is affordable when the data packet size is large so in that large the overhead associate with the, the retransmission of that data packet is very much high as compared with the retransmission of rts and cts but what if the packet size itself is small in such a case then the retransmission of rts will be an overhead so another uh, just a revision of mackey algorithm was proposed known as mackey w it is a refined and extended form of mackey so as uh, compared to mackey it offers a four way handshake that is rts is sent cts is sent data is sent and the acknowledgement for the data is also sent so sender sends uh, this is uh, how four way handshake of mackey w works sender sends uh, rts receiver responds with clear to send that is cts sender sends data packet receiver acknowledges with acknowledgement rts and cts announce the duration of transfer notes overhearing rts and cts keep quiet for that duration sender will retransmit rts if no acknowledgement is received so if acknowledgement is sent out but the acknowledgement is not received by the sender after receiving new rts receiver will returns only the acknowledgement instead of cts for new rts so let us look at the time state diagram for the sender and receiver for this protocol now what is a time state diagram time state diagram is a diagram in which the entity can be in different states of functioning and then there are arrows or the links which are shown which tells that what event has triggered the transition from one state to another state so we will understand the time state diagrams both for the sender and the receiver now there are three states in which the sender can be in idle state wait for cts 
and wait for acknowledgement state. So when will sender move from idle state to wait for CDS state? When it has sent a packet, it has sent the RTS and now it is waiting for CTS. Now if a timeout has occurred, again it will send the RTS and it will be in the same state. Now when it will go from wait for CTS to wait for acknowledgement states. When the sender has received the CTS, it has sent the data. Now it will move in wait for acknowledgement state. Now again it can go back from wait for acknowledgement state to wait for CTS state. When it will happen? When a timeout has uh, occurred, that means it has not uh, gotten acknowledgement, a timeout for acknowledgement has occurred or a negative acknowledgement has occurred. So in this case, it understands that the data packet has not reached and it has to retransmit the packet. So it again sends the RTS because the RTS is necessary before transmitting the data and then it goes to, uh, back to the wait for CTS state. Right? So the sender goes from wait for acknowledgement to wait for CTS state when a timeout has occurred or a negative acknowledgement has occurred and it needs to retransmit the data, it sends the RTS. Now the sender will go from wait for acknowledgement state to the idle state when the acknowledgement has received and the loop is concluded. Similarly, the receiver can also be in two states, the idle states and wait for data states. When, we, when it will be in wait for data state, when it has received an RTS, it has sent the CTS and now it is waiting for the data. And when it will go from wait for data state to the idle state, when the data has been received, it has sent the acknowledgement or when the timeout for the data has occurred and uh, or a negative acknowledgement has occurred and the data is asked. So again, it will be in wait for data states. Okay. So through this time start diagram, we have understand the four way handshake between the sender and receiver in MACAW algorithm. There can also be a five way handshake. When a sender sends RTS, the receiver responds with clear to send, data is sent, then acknowledgement is sent and uh, the receipt of acknowledgement is also been sent. So to summarize with what we have seen in what we have learned in this module, we have learned that medium access control is very important in wireless devices. At the same time, we have also learned that the protocols which are used in wired network cannot be directly used in wireless networks because of the problems associated which are known as hidden and exposed terminal problem near and far terminal problem. We have seen that what these problems are and how they reduce the performance, right? And then we have discussed an algorithm which is specially designed for wireless networks to solve the problem of hidden and exposed terminal problem. Now this technique uses special control packets known as RTS and CTS which are sent before the transmission takes place. We have understood the framework and architecture of this algorithm and by the means of a time state diagram, we have understood the four way handshakes which takes place between the sender and receiver uh, when the transmission takes place. And we have also concluded that this algorithm very uh, neatly solves the problem of hidden and exposed terminals.